Well, hello, folks. Uh, Chris here from CSS Tricks and CodePen and Chop Talk Show. This is the last video in a series on Notion, uh, which is this software product that I adore and is amazing, and I use it for all kinds of things like organizational reasons and communication reasons and planning reasons and so many things that we've covered in the last videos. This one's going to just give us an excuse to wrap things up and talk about a few things that we haven't had a chance to yet. So I know I touched on the idea that, you know, especially in the video series, we looked at using Notion and, you know, I have a Mac and I downloaded the and use the Mac app. It's a native Mac app for Notion. Uh, and I'd say, I don't know, 80%. 70% maybe low end of my usage of Notion is in that desktop app. And I like that. I'm just a desktop app kind of guy. As much as I am a web guy, and I love that Notion is kind of a, it feels like a web app first in a way. And I'd say anecdotally, by the way, that most people I know use um, Notion through the website only. And it's just a 100% feature parity between those two things. I don't know if it's a web wrapper or whatever you want to call it, Electron app. I don't, I don't even know what it is under the scenes. It doesn't matter. The only reason I like the native app is just oh, it's, the, it's an icon in my dock, and I, uh, I just kind of like it that way. I can kind of like close it and open it in a, in a, I don't know, sandboxed way it feels like. But the web app, you know, I use two and I'm not on own. For example, not on my main machine or uh, for any other reason. Sometimes I'll just switch back. Back and forth just for fun. So there's the the web app means also that like if your Linux people on your team want to use Notion, they can. There's doesn't happen to be a native client for Linux, but whatever they use it uh, through the web. I expect they're used to that. But there is a native Windows app, and then on the mobile scene, there are native apps for iOS and Android too. And um, I would say that I wouldn't be as big of a fan of Notion. I pr maybe wouldn't have pulled the trigger on doing all the stuff in Notion that I do if it wasn't for the mobile app, you know? This, again, is a, it seems to me 100% feature parity between the things. There's nothing I can do in any of the ways I use Notion that I can't do otherwise. And it's nice to know that this mobile experience on Notion is just first class, you know? And that's kind of why I will get into it any particular organizational app like this. I need to have access on my phone. Even though it's 30%, 20% of my usage, I need to know that on the go, I have access to all of it in the, in the same kind of way. Notes is just, I need it. And I'm so glad that Notion knocks it out of the park that way. Look, I even have the notes for this very video in my iOS app here. So love that. So I don't know, you know it's just important to know that it's everywhere. We've alluded to it and showed it a little bit in previous videos, but I don't think it can be uh, uh, overstated how good the permission system and the invite system is in Notion. Uh, it's just my favorite way of handling it I've ever seen, I think. So we're looking at one particular document. This happens to be a planning document for CodePen challenges, which is a thing that we do every single week. And we do it internally and people contribute to it. It makes it a perfect candidate, of course, to do in Notion. Uh, but sometimes people outside help. For example, we might have a sponsor for challenges and they might need to give us some assets or contribute to the content in some way. Or sometimes another organization will help us put together the content for the challenges entirely. So this is a planning document that talks about, you know, who's the sponsor? What's the intro to the challenge? What is each week like? There's all these assets to collect and uh, Notion is great for that. But this document exists within the CodePen workspace in this case. It's a public document in the workspace, which means that everyone who's part of the CodePen organization has access to this document. Now, even that wouldn't necessarily need to be true. I could have started this as a private document and then individually added members of the CodePen workspace to access this document if I wanted to. Now, I might do something like that if I have like a founders plus employee document, for example. That can be kind of cool, right? So it's just the founders and then that one employee. I do that in Slack sometimes to have a, a channel for just that scenario that can last over time. Uh, 
So there's that, you know, in, individual groups on a one-off basis per document privately, you know, and employees can do that with each other too, which is kind of nice. Now I'm going to open up the members tab for a moment here. Uh, here's all of our members and there's this concept called groups. I'm not actively using it right now, but I like that this exists. I can imagine in workspaces that are a little bit bigger than ours that this would be really useful. For example, if there's a design team, I could make that a group and then add members uh, to that team and then it basically gives me easy access to share documents just amongst that group which is nice you know maybe there's a design home and everybody doesn't need to see that or on purpose we're not giving them access to that because we just stay out of here these are our you know in progress documents or a place for one particular team to talk to each other they could have a home based document and then share that within the team so the sharing happens on an individual document level and you know how nested um notion can get that's an important concept too that any document can have its own sharing settings no matter where it is in the nesting and then those settings kind of trickle down to it so if there's sub pages to that document it inherits those permissions which is that's a clutch idea i think but i can open the sharing panel of this document and i can see all this stuff it's tremendously nice and easy to manage for example if i want it just totally public to the world i just click a toggle and then that url i can send it to people whether they're logged in or not whether they even have a notion account or not and they'll be able to see that document we did talk about that um, by default because this document exists in the workspace it's automatically shared between everybody so i don't have i can't control that it would have to be a private Private document and then I can start adding individual people now if this was a private document let's just do it so that you can see it if I make a new private document now only I can see this thing that's the nature of a private document and I can invite individual people if I wanted to if I wanted to just invite my co-founder Alex I could do that and then any document that this contains he would have access to as well and then there's the design team right flip that on now you know the entire design team has it you know we just talked about the groups that's a tremendously nice idea i think now beyond that i can invite people who aren't even members of this workspace at all they might be the first time they ever even had a Notion account. Uh, I can just type in their email and it will invite them. Now they'll have to sign up for Notion. That's free. And by the way, their free plan became really generous and that it's totally unlimited now. That's just a little aside, but I noticed that. Fantastic move. Thanks, Notion. Uh, and then they'll have access to the document to see it, it, it while they're logged in, which is awesome too. So it's within workspace is really easy to invite people because you just click their name, but outside the workspace, it works great too. Just a really intuitive, nice permission system uh, that, that uh, 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 is, is just worth copying. <laughs> Notion is a smidge opinionated about documents in certain ways, particularly coming from other tools, perhaps something like a Microsoft Word or Google Doc, where you know, it's a little more loosey-goosey what you're able to do uh, with documents. Now, I'm not trying to tell you that Notion is limited. It, it, it's not in most ways, but for example, I can't make the font papyrus. I can't add a garish neon background behind text. There are certain things that you just can't do in Notion, but it's the perfect level of opinionated where no matter what, anybody with <laughs> on your team, they like can't make an ugly document. They can't make an unreadable document. They can't make like a problematic, weird document that just nobody looks at because it's just, I don't know, like a wild card made it kind of thing. So let, let's say, you know, we're making a document here. Let's go through what options we do have and you'll see what I mean. Let's say we're going to kick off, you know, Project Redwood or something like that. First of all, um, it's just is what it is. The title of the document is this nice, bold font or whatever. I don't have any real design choices there at all but I have a few design choices with the overall document for one thing I can add it, uh, an icon now emoji by default which is a just a wonderful thing like I think that might be one of the things that that hooks you on notion early on it's just that all documents have an emoji to it which is a, a fun thing to pick but also like imparts some structure and some organization that in a way that 
just works. That's interesting. So uh, maybe this one has an emoji. Maybe it doesn't. You don't have to have one. And an icon doesn't have to be an emoji. You can upload an image as well. Let's say it's your company icon or the you know the logo of a brand you're working with. Whatever. It, it can be anything. But the emoji thing is nice. Also, you don't have to have it. Not a problem. Uh, and you can add a header too. Now, how big? You don't have any control over that. The header just is the header. It's a nice image. They have some nice defaults in here. Not too many defaults, mind you, which I feel like was a, a, a very kind of on purpose thing, you know, not to overwhelm you with choice here. And they're kind of abstract by default, too. I don't think they always encourage you to like think very specifically. It's not supposed to be necessarily like a screenshot of the project you're working on or anything like that. Just make the document feel a little more metaphorical and big thinky, you know, which I really like. Uh, and you can move things around too. Like, oh, he's out in outer space. Oh no, it's the earth, you know? Uh, and the, you, you know, you can't count on that too much because the, the size of the document kind of affects the, the positioning too, depending on the size and placement of the image and all that. Uh, but we can do some project redwood doesn't that you know deserve us searching for now now these beautiful unsplash images let's pick out some some presumably redwood uh, trees from unsplash and that'll pop in here in a moment and that gives us like some nice design control you know just unsplash just has really nice images gosh I wonder if the oh there it popped in uh, reposition can we get the the crux of the images in there oh yeah love that um, okay, so that is, you know, without hardly doing any work, the, the document already looks nice. You know, I'd be happy to share this with people. They'd see this. Oh, God, he's, you know, everything's aligned nicely. It's a beautiful looking header. It just feels very modern and nice. Um, I can type, um, you know, lorem, ipsum, whatever. I'm, and I don't have a lot of control. I, like I said, I can't pick papyrus there, but there's a few things I can do. Uh, I can make it a header. I can make it bigger and smaller. There's just a couple of options that way. It can be a list, and I don't have control over the list bullets or anything like that. It's not a full-on website in that way. I can transform them into a numbered list instead. Uh, I could make collapsible sections, which is kind of nice if there's like a bunch of, you know, too much information and any particular document making these little collapsible sections to reveal it is kind of nice i put movies and invoices and stuff like that in there that repetitive things can go in there uh, i can also make certain headers uh backgrounds and colors so if i say and not just headers any text but well let's do it for headers right here so we'll say header one and header two um okay now they're not headers to begin with we can turn them into headers um, whoops, I keep losing it. Turn into header two. Uh, or I could have done it like markdown, which is boop, boop, header two. Cool. Now, I have a little bit of control over the color. That's an option here. I could make it a, uh, let's see, a nice orange color for the second one. Let's see if they have a nice green color for the second one. Sure. But notice I don't have every color in the world. There's no color picker. I just get what I get here. And that's a good thing. That's the opinionated stuff that I like here, that these documents have some limitations which encourage creativity, but also kind of let you not ruin them, which I like. I can make these into columns just by dragging. That's kind of nice. It gives me some um, structure here, but not so much structure that I can just wah, do whatever I want and make a gross looking document. If you really are uh, think the font thing is a problem, know that you do have a couple of options here. For one thing, you can turn um, the style into three different styles in a particular document. You can make it monospace, which might be nice for some coding documents. Or uh, I use it occasionally when I want to uh, not necessarily use a table um, like a table and notion like we covered but just kind of have things line up a little better because it's mono space so i could go you know xxx and then know that if i space the correct number of things over i get a little uh, structure just by virtue of it being a mono space font and then there is a um 
a serif looking one too, which is might be nice for like job postings or public blog posts or something. Um, but I don't know. It's a bit of a classier look, maybe perhaps more readable to some people. But I swear to God, 99% of my documents, I just leave default. I think that's perhaps to me the most readable and the most predictable and most notion feeling of all the of all the styles so there's that going on so it's opinionated in some ways i you know the world isn't my oyster here i don't have any css control over this page for example i can't pick anything under the sun to make it happen here but there's there's enough control that i can kind of do whatever i want but nobody can screw it up and i love that i love that every document in our entire workspace um isn't terrible like if there's people on the team without a design bone in their body, it doesn't matter. The document's going to look fine. So we just said how Notion is opinionated about some things. You know, there's a bunch of stuff that you can't do, but good things, in my opinion. Uh, but for the most part, you'll find that Notion is unopinionated. Now, it does really shine, I think, on teams and groups and organizations. Using Notion together uh, is the best thing you can do with it, I think. But I think the more you use it, the more you're like, I'm going to just do everything in here, at least to, to some degree, you know, like there's, a, there's healthy levels of that. Uh, but here's some examples from my own life that uh, that are relevant. Now, I have a workspace all to myself. So I have all of my uh, my my group workspaces, of course, but I also just have my workspace. And in my workspace, I have all these personal documents. For example, I was going to buy a new banjo recently and I was just wondering. So, of course, I do go through the same rigmarole. I pick a nice header image. I pick out the perfect emotion. And I just write some notes about where my mind is at, you know, just other little tidbits of, of, you know, who's got one, where I should look, what am I thinking about? I start looking at custom builders and their, the kind of models that they offer and, you know, who sells them, what my basic thoughts are. I'm embedding YouTube videos, the, how they sound like, you know, of course I'm doing my own research all over the place, but it helps to have a bit of a document that I can uh, refer to and think about to help me compare stuff and i'd say this is pretty sloppy too like i don't you know obviously notion doesn't care too but it's not like every document i make in fact most aren't aren't like things of beauty in notion they're just like bullet points and just bleh. you know what i one of them was um i was looking at buying a bag this is like two years ago i think and i just the, here's this document this is still useful to me because i never ended up buying one but i made a list of like six seven look at this last one doesn't even have a bullet point on it so it's actually seven this is so sloppy it's just a loose collection of links the title of the post is bags and it has a bag emoji on it <laughs> And it's still useful to me. This is just sloppy, but I don't care. It's still, it's just my personal workspace and I like it. And Notion certainly doesn't care. You know, I was fantasizing about buying an Airstream recently, put a beautiful Airstream picture up there, shared it with my wife, you know, with some of our friends so they could think about it. You know, I started comparing the prices of different things, looking down notes, thinking about new or used, you know, trying to compare the models and figuring out which one is right for us dropping pictures in there you know the most relevant things i think to our family and just trying to figure it out now we haven't pulled the trigger on this either but it's just me thinking this stuff out you know i made a checklist for going camping so that you know i can start thinking about do we have this stuff in the house like and we can use this checklist right before we go camping you know kind of nice you know i was made a, a table to compare the pizza places in our town i didn't get particularly far but but uh, at least now, sometimes when we're about to order pizza, I'm like, let me just check the list, you know, make sure that we're thinking through all the options here. <laughs> Uh, I track our monthly finances in Notion. Of course, we use, um, you know, more exotic accounting software mostly, but for scratch pad kind of stuff, figuring out big picture finances stuff, I do that in Notion all the time, you know, and I like that that's on my phone too, of course, and all that. Uh, and then, you know, a lot of times in my workspaces, I'll have this archive. You've probably seen this in some of my documents and I might have an archive in other folders too. Like there's a projects thing and the projects has its own archive. It doesn't need to go into a, a global archive, but rather than like use Notion's trash, which feels a little bit more official, like you're deleting things, 
I have an archive folder for things that have just kind of passed, you know, uh, birthday party planning. And, you know, here's a trip my, me and my wife took to Mexico where we plan things and what we're doing and <laughs> that kind of stuff. Like I said, most of these documents, definitely not a thing of beauty. Uh, uh, but I just love having it. You know, you know, my wife couldn't, I was out of town and she needed to operate the snowblower and I made her a document and shared it. She has a personal workspace on Notion too, you know, and I was showed her, you know, a YouTube video and I took screenshots of moments in the YouTube video of, of, of just, you know, the important aspects and kind of wrote it out so she could follow it. And then it worked fine. You know, like <laughs> she called me a, a Notion addict in here. That's hilarious. Uh, Cause I kind of am, you know. So anyway, Notion is great for that stuff. Shines with Teams, but shines on a personal level uh, uh, as well. And if you're using it for Teams, you know you're already in there. You're already in the flow. Using it for both is really clutch. Hey. I think that'll do it for our video series on Notion. Now, there is so much more for you to dig into. I'd love for you to just try it and tell me the cool stuff that you're doing in it because I feel like I'm only taking advantage of 50% of the cool stuff that Notion can do, particularly when you get into the databases and the linked data and all that stuff. That's the stuff I really want to start digging into because I think it's so cool. But, you know, I think that's an important aspect that goes through all three of these videos is that you don't have to be a master of this. If, if there's one thing that I think is so important that Notion brings you that was frankly hard for me to do before Notion was just have this home base of documents for a team. That seems crazy to even say that because it's like, God, hasn't there been, wasn't there something? And I was like, I don't know that there was, at least there wasn't for me that clicked in this same way. And that having this home base hub of documents that are shared within a team with all those great permissions and all these great features and all that is just so, so, so vital. It is harder than it seems to keep a team on the same page about everything and Notion is that, and it does it through this just beautiful dance of being opinionated about the right things and unopinionated about the right things uh, and all that, that you really don't have to be a master of this software to get a tremendous amount of value out of it. So high five Notion for the sponsorship. Give it a try. See if it works for, 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 for you and for your team. Uh, and it's particularly cool that the free plan is $0 in an unlimited capacity these days. So uh, at least you got that, huh? Give it a try. <laughs>